white leftists, when the results look like this shit, when they look like this, when these are the results, look at your tab here, look at that percentage, when these are the fucking results, y'all do not, I repeat, y'all do the fuck not get to sit here and try to call in or reel in the black community when we are angry at these results and when a bunch of black people storm over to businesses that they originally boycotted in solidarity because some of y'all would not put respect on the vice president's name. I'm of course talking about that video where the woman goes, vote for Trump or Jill Stein or whoever, just don't vote for Kamala Harris. And specifically, specifically pronouncing the vice president's name wrong, which is a racist thing that a lot of white people have historically done to black people, specifically to disrespect them. Y'all don't get to reel us in for that shit. I'm sorry. Because the point is, black people, for a lot of y'all, will never fucking be good enough. And regardless of what you want to say about her being a part of an administration that's committing G-side, so we go ahead and vote for the other guy that was in power that almost threw us into World War III and who was also funding that G-side? <laughs> Oh man, divide and conquer. I see it's such a satisfying, unintentional tactic. I mean, I don't think we meant to do this. It just, the left ate its own. And I just, I love watching it. I don't know if you idiots know this, but even during Trump's, there's never been a time where Israel has existed and the United States not funded or backed them in some way, shape, or form. That's not true, but that's not what this episode is about and their occupation in gaza the g side has been going on longer than the average viewer of this video has been alive listen i'm a leftist i don't like democrats i understand they serve the bourgeois they serve the capital interests of the ruling class and as a result i am diametrically opposed to them but i'm also not about to sit here and disrespect the first black woman to become vice president of the goddamn united states person who commies commies mad at commies who would have thought? Who was over fucking qualified for that goddamn job. You idiots can cry me a river. You mean to tell me this woman was expected to craft together a coherent, cohesive, effective political movement within the span of three to four fucking months? Y'all expected this woman to move the whole god. See, this is what's funny. They're saying that she didn't win because she didn't have enough time. I would say that that's true if she maximized her time. She was dodging interviews, uh, media appearances that she was getting invited to. So I don't think that that's a good argument considering she didn't maximize the time that she had even a little bit. Matter of fact, she avoided a lot of interviews. So I don't think that that's a good argument. That damn world. And the nanosecond she said something y'all didn't agree with, all of a sudden it's I'm jumping shit, fuck this shit. I got really stupid white leftists laughing and leaving caucasious comments in the comment sections of some of my videos like, laughs an imperial boomerang like that imperial boomerang's not about to come back here and spank black people the most spank poc the most like the g site's not going to start happening here and to us first black people saying fuck the boycotts and storm into those businesses is because black people have built this bitch we have fucking built every goddamn revolutionary movement that has occurred in this fucking country or at the very least we have been instrumental in turning the tides in those revolutionary movements and still we are held down still we are held back still we are gunned down by cops still we are disrespected at our jobs still our hairstyles are disrespected and appropriated still every every single one of our mannerisms gets thrown into a comedy sketch by a white dude this is about black people being upset that for a lot of y'all we are not good enough for a lot of y'all we will never fucking be good enough especially black women try your stupid uncle not us <laughs> He's so mad. My message to our Muslim community is that we're going to have to re fight regardless of who's in the White House. My name is Linda Sarsour and I'm the co-founder of Empower Action. I haven't put my position out publicly because I have the privilege of being from New York. And in New York, uh, we are a deep blue state. It actually doesn't matter uh, who we vote for in New York. In New York. Hey, that might not last much longer. I mean, there's some shifts happening for sure. I did a write-in candidate in New York. Um, and I and I don't feel that comfortable um, in this moment where there are so many people on so many different sides to divide our community. Our community, it, it, my my goal is I need our community to be together on November 6th because we have to get right back to work. President Biden is still our president, regardless, till the end of the year. And we have to go back and make sure that President Biden does not leave office with the continued legacy of genocide. He still has the power to pick up the phone and call Netanyahu and say, stop this genocide or we will never send you another penny. 
And there's also a bill on the table. Senator Bernie Sanders is bringing a bill on the table after elections to try to block $20 billion to the state of Israel. So there's so much work to do. So I tell our people, I'm not going to debate. I don't want to fracture our community. I don't want to lose friends that I respect. I just want you to go to the polls and vote. But the most important is please vote down the ballot. As Palestinian Americans, I know some of us have mixed feelings after this election. But one thing we should be extremely proud of ourselves about is that we came together, we achieved unity, and we forced the Republicans and the Democrats to speak to our liking. Hell, we gave the Green Party life. We changed the political climate, not only in America, but in Israel. They don't even support Netanyahu. We changed the political climate all over the globe. Man, this is what I'm saying, man. Don't believe your freaking TikTok for you page. This dude is believing the hype, the propaganda that they spew. They they end up believing. That's why they were blindsided by the election. This is complete garbage. And by the way, this is good. If you want to keep fracturing on a two-party system where you're trying to make this third party alive, then you're just going to end up splitting the leftists, which, hey, man, go ahead and do that. The Republicans, what what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And if you want to keep doing that and want a, you know, two generations deep of conservatism, hey, all good with us. Split split up the, the leftists. I don't care. We canceled billion dollar corporations and we did that because we achieved unity, power through unity. And it's our job to keep that momentum up. So take your feelings aside. Keep that stride. Keep that pride going. Victory is soon ahead, and we won't stop until Palestine and all oppressed peoples are free. Ugh, give me a break with that. My top issue was the ongoing genocide in Palestine. I voted for Kamala Harris, though. I think she may handle the issue better than Trump, but I don't know. I'm trying. I'm just trying to be hopeful. Okay. Are you we sort of? Um, I was conflicted. Were there any other things that you were concerned about, like? I mean, I was obviously worried about women's rights, so I knew that Kamala would be better than Trump, but I do worry about the global issues at hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and how are you feeling about the election? Do you... Uh, I dr I'm dreading it. <laughs> really? The last election, I was so stressed out. Most of Palestinian people, you have a, a link, you have a watermelon, you have a flag, and you sit here and blame Palestinian people for the election result, I want you to sit back, fucking take your mask off. You're a fascist. You never gave a fuck about the Palestinian people. For you to blame the Palestinian people for the results of the election is crazy. When we have undecided voters, Jill Stein voters, and the ones that used their vote as a protest for Trump against Kamala. How about you get mad at those people? How about you get mad at the ones in this country that are sitting here using their protest to vote and now here we are but for you to blame palestinian people as a whole when they're currently going through a genocide right now i'm gonna go get starbucks i'm gonna go get mcdonald's you never gave a fuck about the palestinian people you use that as a privilege to show your activism your morals are not aligned your morals are on the line of fascists as the republicans as the people that want to fuck up our country for you to sit here and say oh they never gave a fuck about us they did as they still currently are going through a genocide, they're still using their voices when they should use their voices for themselves. They're using it for us over here because they understand the American imperialism and the wrath under the country of a fascist state. But you sitting here saying you're going to go get Starbucks or McDonald's, your privilege is showing. When I scratch you, a fascist. Fascist, white supremacy, genocide. All words that have absolutely no meaning now. Leads. So don't sit here and say you support Palestinian people and then go behind and say, you know what? I'm going to blame them because they never supported us. They painted murals. They. Yeah, I think that this is primarily why they're mad, right? Because black people saw this as their black candidate, especially black women. And the fact that such fewer, fewer Muslims uh, wanted to vote for uh, Kamala Harris felt like a betrayal. And they were not expecting that, which I love. I love seeing this, like, you know, civil war again. They sat here and used their voices for us in 2020 on the black and brown lives. They sat here and say, fight against the fascist state of your country and support us in hand in hand because we're all community. But for you to sit here and blame them as a whole, I'm not going to blame that three-year-old kid that lost his leg. I'm not going to blame the mother that has to. Okay, that, that, that's, that's enough. 
I'm sitting in my car in the Starbucks parking lot. <laughs> the boycott's over. Because the boycott's over. You guys thought that the Biden administration wasn't doing enough to negotiate a ceasefire deal. You guys free Palestine a little too close to the sun sat at home on election day in protest and didn't go vote or you casted a protest vote for trump just because you thought that the biden administration wasn't doing enough for gaza do you think that yahoo wants a ceasefire deal do you really think he wants a ceasefire deal because he doesn't he wants to wipe those people off the map and he backed the candidate that would sit back and allow him to do it we participated in the Starbucks boycott, the McDonald's boycott. We participated in all of Oh man, she feels so betrayed. You can tell by her tone, she feels so betrayed. I love it. I hope that this is a good time for reflection because your loyalty with these other activists was surface level. And I hopefully this helps black people especially go down the rabbit hole of how racist Islam is. I don't know if that's why a lot of the Muslims didn't vote for her because she's a woman and she's black. Um, I assume maybe that that probably had something to do with it predicated on their culture. Um, I hope they go down that rabbit hole. All of that. We did the little watermelon thing on TikTok. We did all of that. We were we were <laughs> we were 10 toes down for Palestine and you guys were not 10 toes down for America. Like Americans were not 10 toes down for America. I just find it ironic that a lot of you guys cared so much about Palestinians and the people of Gaza, but like you just sent those people to their graves with your vote or your lack of vote. And I don't want anybody to tell me that I can't go to Starbucks anymore. This is my <laughs> ice sugar cookie latte and I'm going to enjoy the fuck out of it today. <laughs> okay. That's actually, that's actually hilarious. That that's, that's pretty funny. I'm here waiting for my dog to do his business. I also want to talk about this whole thing with black people and the Palestinian movement and the pro-Palestine people and the Palestinian people. For the people who are currently in Palestine, my heart still and always will and will forever go out to you. What is happening is a monstrosity, period. Now, I understand my black people who are saying, we're going to take our foot off the gas because we always have our foot on the gas when it comes to any type of social injustice because we are often on the receiving end of social injustice. I understand why anybody would wanna pause and regroup, especially when we have a few pro-Palestinian Palestinians, apparently saying, hey, don't vote for Kamala, vote for Jill Stein. And I understand that they were frustrated with the current administration, which Kamala is under, but I just have to really take a step back and really think and say, what makes you guys think that a woman, woman who is a double minority being black, being Indian, having immigrant parents would not try to fight for you guys if she were elected in the office as our president. I know a lot of people were saying or thinking, well, she's currently the vice president, but guess what? She's not the president. And whether or not she agrees with what's currently happening, she's not the president. And that's like such cope. That's such cope. At the end of the day, I know it hurts, but they don't want they don't want her to be in office and they were willing to do anything to not vote for her at the end of the day. I know she's trying to be nice. I know there's like civil war going on within their creepy community, but it is what it is. Paris? No. I don't know anyone voting for Trump either. I feel like I'm a Palestinian first and an American. That's what I learned from this, to be honest. I will be I'm a Palestinian first and then an American. How pathetic. Not only do you identify with a country that never existed and doesn't currently exist, but you live in America and you're so ungrateful that you want to be that second. That's wild. That is wild. Green Party. I'll be voting for Jill Stein. 
I'd rather my vote, even whatever people says, that these votes will be considered for a different party, because uh, considering we're a swing state, I genuinely do not care. I care that my vote is a conscious, morally conscious vote, and it will be going for Jill Stein. And I'm done catering to a two-party system. I think the U.S. is secondary to Israel. I do blame the Democratic Party. I do blame that these people in administration, like my parents voted for. Yeah, no more Muslim migration in America. Hell no. We can't, we can't do Biden. this. A lot of people, a lot of Arab and Dearborn voted for Biden. And what did we get? We get promised this, this, and that. And we got a genocide. We got this continuous support of mass murder of children, women, elder. The people who voted for you, like these What's funny is Jill Stein's Jewish. I'm looking at this right now. That's actually hilarious. People are directly impacted and they genuinely do not care. And when they play this game where they send people to Michigan to tell us, hey, like, if you vote for us, we're gonna continue doing that. Like, I'm not playing this game anymore. My vote does not matter. People like me and people like who believe, who look like me, dress like me, act like me. I genuinely believe the United States of America. You look white. That does not care about what my people think. I feel like change shouldn't be just done through elections. Like, as an American. Yeah, as a colored person, it just, you know, life is so hard. Like, dude, look at her. My power isn't just to vote. My power is in my freedom of speech, my freedom of assembly. What a joke. What a joke. No Palestine movement in the U.S. anymore, or even globally, because black men and women have always... It is so funny watching other folks get on here and try to reaffirm black liberals and only highlight the black bourgeoisie opinion, trying to make it seem like all black people are a monolith and all black people are abandoning Palestinians because of some fucking TikTok discourse. And these folks always say, you know, I I empower black voices. I listen to black people. I, I stand up for black people. And then when a black voice tells you to stop making incorrect analyses on issues surrounding us that you have no idea about, you block them. And to be honest, that shit is racist as fuck. Like, to push the viewpoint that all black people are a monolith when it comes to the Palestine movement and we're all leaving this movement that we've been involved with, involved in the Palestinian struggle. That's funny. Black people are leaving the movement, yeah, because they feel snubbed for Muslims not voting for uh, Kamala Harris. This is this is funny. This is fun to watch. Since the start, like to say that that's just so politically ignorant, and frankly, it is again racist as hell. Yeah, I mean, get used to it, bro. You talk about race. You you guys talk about race twenty four seven. So don't uh, you know expect a little bit of racism. Blaming Muslim voters for Harris losing the election. And maybe that's my algorithm, but it's disturbing nonetheless. It's a scary time and you're going to want to blame the people who don't look like you, but when it comes down to it, Muslims did not lose the election, white people did. And I'm not even talking about white Trump voters, I'm talking about white liberals. So there are somewhere between three and four million Muslims in America, and that includes all of the children. So that's less than 1% of the pop, uh, about 1% of the population. Now, certain states have much higher populations of Muslims. So California, Texas, Illinois, Michigan all have um, relatively high numbers of Muslims. The only state in this election where Muslims could have swung the vote was Michigan, and even had Harris won Michigan, she still wouldn't have won the election. The votes are still coming in, but it looks like Kamala Harris got 10 million fewer votes than Joe Biden did. Uh, it's actually like 15, 20, I believe. I think it's 20. Um, and that's not because of lack of popularity we know why that is because of uh you know what a little bit of extracurricular activities so we need to ask ourselves what demographic is big enough that they can make up the bulk of those 10 million votes and the answer is white people we are still the largest demographic in this country and what appears to have happened is that white liberals couldn't get their butts off the couches and go vote for a black woman it's also really important to remember why muslims um, as a group not individuals but as a group refuse to vote for harris there's a genocide going on millions are displaced, starving, expected to buy, die of disease, and tens of thousands are being killed, tortured, and raped directly. Are you really going to blame the few hundred thousand people who are protesting a genocide over the millions of people who simply could not get out and vote for a Black woman? And just to emphasize, I'm not even talking about white Trump voters. I am talking about white liberals who agree with us, who sat out this election for no reason. Wow, it's crazy how obsessed they are about race. It still blows my mind. 